Hey guys, sorry if uh, there's um, if you hear a, a, like any sound outside. It is uh, pouring out there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, welcome back to my new Pixar analysis series. Today we are reviewing *A Bug's Life*, Pixar's second and not so great film. After the studio's wild success with their first film, *Toy Story*, they ran into a bit of trouble with *A Bug's Life*. Nowadays, it's considered one of the weaker links in Pixar's catalog, and nobody talks about it quite like they do with the Pixar greats, of which there are many, of course. For me, on one hand, I am a little bit sorry that this film has been forgotten, just a little bit, but on the other hand, I have my personal problems with it, to the point where I can't bring myself to call it a good movie. It has its moments here and there, and it's definitely not the worst Pixar film out there, but it's one of those movies that I am the least likely to put on again, if ever. I know there are some people who actually do like this movie, and that's totally fine, but maybe you should sit this one out, because I have very few nice things to say about this movie. With that said, here's why I think A Bug's Life is kind of bad. <laughs> One of my biggest problems with A Bug's Life is the animation, which I'm sure was pretty groundbreaking in 1998, but now looks absolutely terrible. I know I gave the animation in Toy Story a pass, but here it needs to be addressed. This has by far the weakest and most outdated graphics in any Pixar film. Nothing in this movie looks good. The lighting looks flat, the environments and backgrounds feel bland, and even the rain during the climax looks like oval shooting down, which I'm sure was intended that way since the movie is told through the eyes of an ant, but still does not look right. Everything somehow looks less polished here than in Toy Story. And Toy Story's animation doesn't even hold up today either! I think my biggest gripe with this movie's animation are the facial expressions. They are just so weird and off-putting that even as a dumb kid, I never liked the way the characters looked. They're not wooden, just super odd looking. The ants like too often look like each other, as if they came straight out of a video game where all the players act and move very stiffly. Plus the expressions themselves, while not wooden like I said, still look weird. And I understand why the graphics turned out like this due to the technical limitations the studio had, but that doesn't change the fact that the graphics absolutely do not hold up today by any standards. And even despite all of this, the animation still somehow looks better than Shark Tale. My eyes! Speaking of characters, the animation isn't the only thing that drags this one down for me. The characters are all pretty stale for the most part, and a lot either feel uninteresting or serve zero purpose to the story. Princess Ada's entire character is that she's worried about being queen and is a huge jerk to flick. You know, up until Jessie in Toy Story 2, Pixar hadn't really created a compelling female character up until that point, and Ada isn't very interesting. And while we're on the subject of female characters, Dot isn't interesting either. Her whole character is that she is the only defender for Flick, she can't fly, and on several occasions gets into trouble. She doesn't go through any real sort of development, and you could pretty much remove her from the movie and it wouldn't feel as cluttered. Heck, you could do that for basically all of the characters in this movie. The Queen, the Council, the Circus Bugs, they're all just there and adding nothing. And then there's Flick, who I really don't find to be the most memorable Pixar protagonist. He's mostly optimistic and likes to invent things, and that's it. He's not explored or developed as much as he could have been. Plus, the entire colony hates him for some reason, and they don't explain why. Like, yeah, he destroyed the offering, but that's after he was introduced. Everyone hates him from the very beginning, but they don't explain how or why? 
he's an outcast because he just makes mistakes? In fact, now that I think about it, that's literally just O from Home again. And even that movie showed us cutaways of the other aliens disliking O before he makes his huge mistake. And he explains later on why everyone dislikes him. And of course, the worst part of this movie is when the truth comes out that Flick didn't actually bring back warriors. And I'm sorry, but this argument just feels so forced in, just so cliche and melodramatic. YouTuber Shea Fearless Productions already touched on this scene in his Over the Hedge review. This is what he had to say. This is why A Bug's Life is actually kinda bad, don't at me. Because it pours so much energy into this dumbass fight between Flick and the other ants, who berate him for bringing back circus bugs instead of warriors. But like, at this point, it doesn't matter what kinda bugs they are. Having them fight the grasshoppers off is not the plan. The giant fake bird is the plan. But no, we can't possibly use this giant fake bird anymore, because that plan came from a liar. Ooh, yeah. Obviously, this means this pretty brilliant plan is the also a lie, somehow. You see the problem? This movie is foregoing logic and common sense in favor of melodrama. This forced, irrelevant argument is pure melodrama, plain and simple. I could not say that any better. The rest of the characters don't fare much better. The queen isn't interesting, the ant council is just super forgettable, and the circus bugs aren't great either. None of them get much personality, they show off their gimmick, and then are just kind of left on the sidelines for the rest of it. You get the idea, most of the characters are pretty weak, and like I said earlier, they add nothing to the plot or are straight up immediately forgettable. Except for the villain. You've heard this many times before already, but it needs to be said again. Hopper is one of the best villains Pixar has ever made. He's the only thing everyone remembers about this movie, and it's easy to see why. He's just simply evil, and you can definitely see why the ants are scared of him. He's intimidating and can be really brutal. Murdering two of his own kind, beating up Flick at the end of the movie, once from one of his henchmen and the next time by him. You know this guy means business. And dude, don't even get me started on his death scene. It goes so inexplicably hard and I love it. But the movie is dragged down again by its story, which, might I add, is barely ever a straightforward plot. The movie just can't decide what it wants to be. It starts off simple enough as a movie about an ant inventor misunderstood by his peers, then it turns into a movie about said ant going on an adventure to find warriors to defend their colony, then, it turns into a movie about building a bird to scare off the grasshoppers. Then, during the climax, it turns into this dark, a post-apocalyptic nightmare. And then the movie ends like it's nothing. It's like four completely different plots just put together into a single film. Any one of these would have made the movie work, but instead it just comes across as being weirdly segmented. I'm not saying it's unheard for a movie to keep changing things around, but only as long as they do it in a way that doesn't feel like it's clunkily mashed together. This movie can't decide if it wants to be an action film, an adventure film, a war film, an apocalyptic nightmare. D just, d n none of it meshes. None, none of it's like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel right. He keeps jumping to completely different tones and styles and doesn't do any of them particularly well. Plus, nothing is surprising either and you already know exactly what's going to happen before it happens. As soon as Flick ruins the offering for the grasshoppers, you think, okay, the grasshoppers are obviously going to be mad that they didn't get their share and are now going to make things more complicated for the ants. When Flick realizes he brought back circus bugs instead of warriors, you think, Okay, Flick is gonna try and keep this a secret from everyone until the truth comes out. And then eventually the liar will be revealed and everyone will hate him and then he'll realize he was wrong. But at the end of the day, this is still only my third least favorite Pixar film. There are definitely some things it has going for it. The score by Randy Newman is probably the best aspect of the whole movie. Whenever there's a big action sequence, the score just goes super hard. Newman has already done fantastic scores for other Pixar movies like Toy Story, Cars, Monsters, Inc. And this belongs up there as one of his best compositions. It's not my favorite Pixar score, but it is up there for sure. 
Speaking of action sequences, this movie sure does have them. Along with the score, the action just brings up the intensity. It makes you really feel the danger and tension of scenes that are supposed to have danger and tension. And of course, much like most Pixar films, you get tons of funny moments. Overall, it's not a film devoid of any good elements. I have a soft spot for some of it, and I would certainly put it above Brave and the Good Dinosaur. But as I've been talking about throughout this video, I'm simply not a fan of this movie, and it's one that I have the least enthusiasm to put on again, if I ever. If you like A Bug's Life, cool. But... I like it, but not a lot. I don't like it.